All right, everyone. Hello. Uh, so welcome back to our stream. Uh, second episode over here. We're getting started. So uh, quick recap before we move along and uh, start figuring the Docker Compose file. What we've done the previous week, right? Last Wednesday. Uh, so we went ahead and installed CentOS 9. Right, the stream version of it. Uh, we bumped up the physical uh, resources on it. We got four CPUs and four gigs of RAM, just because by default, whatever Parallels gave us was not really enough. Um, and then we installed Docker, Docker Compose, right? And then we started creating our Docker Compose file for spinning up GitLab and the GitLab runner. So we're gonna continue with that today, and hopefully let's see how much progress we made. Uh, and at the same time, we're gonna start saving what we're working on into GitHub. So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna create a GitHub repo, and I'm gonna push whatever we work on today to that GitHub repo so that you can access it after if you want to have a look at, you know, how we progress with, uh, with building our pipeline have a look over there at the file and uh, you know call the repo if you want the pull requests and all of that all right so let's go ahead i'm gonna log in back into my vm here there we go And we had left off at GitLab, uh, the ports that I was saying, 8080, we checked with NetStat if port 80 is used on the CentOS virtual machine was not, so we can easily forward that port 80 from CentOS to port 80 in the Docker uh, that's running GitLab. I'm gonna go ahead next. And we're gonna pass in some environment variables. Uh, so we're gonna do environment. So with this environment variables is basically just environment variables. There's options that we pass in into the Docker container as it gets spun up and brought online, right? So there's some environment variables. It's basically passing variables from um, our CentOS environment into the uh, GitHub Docker container. And we'll see here, uh, so GitLab root password would be one of them. So this is basically just specifying the root password for our GitLab installation, right? So this would be the account that I log in first and then I create the other users and everything. So this is the password for that root account. I'm gonna make it so let's go one, two, three, four, five. I'm very safe, but it'll do for test environment. Here of course you would configure you know a password that's more secure than this in your own environments, then would have GitLab uh, shared runners registration token so this is basically the token that the runner process will use to register with gitlab so we'll see in the next section or in the next service once we spin up and have a, a runner process also we'll specify the same token in the runner as we have specified in our github installation so that they match so that the runner can uh, register with GitLab and be able to communicate and run the pipeline, right? Because the, the runner process is the main component of the pipeline within GitLab. And the runner process listens for any updates to the repo and when an update comes in, right? Uh, there's a new change in your uh, repo there's a new change that you want to perform in your infrastructure that will trigger the runner. The runner will take that repo, will clone it, uh, and 
we'll we'll get to that. We'll pull a Docker image, right? We'll run that uh, the contents of the container in the Docker image and make sure that you know, the pipeline runs uh, according to your specifications. Okay, so GitLab shift run as registration token. Just gonna call it. Um, Switch runners, kind of like a secret token, uh, registration token. Another environment variables we're going to pass in is the GitLab host. So we're going to reference this just in case. We're going to create um, a name for our GitLab host, right? Uh, if you want to access it by name, also with this that box name, um, and then we have virtual host, which is our that box environment. All right, so that's all for GitLab. Let's go now and configure in this Docker Compose file our second service, which would be the runner, right? The GitLab runner service that I was talking about. So we're gonna call it runner one. Same thing, restart. We want to always restart it. Uh, the image that we're gonna use for this. gonna be GitLab GitLab runner and we're gonna have here some environment variables also and we're gonna go ahead environment And we're going to start specifying the environment variables that will get passed into the runner Docker container. All right? We're going to have two Docker containers basically running uh, at the same time. So first of all, we want to get to the registration token, right? And that would have to match the one we configured for GitLab. Uh, so it's Twitch runners. We're gonna configure the, the runner name. I'm just gonna give it a name. I call it runner one. Um, we're gonna specify the executor here. So that means what environment will be used by the runner to clone that repo in, right? So I'm just gonna specify runner executor docker. And this could be different. You have a, a lot of different options here for the executor, right? It could be a virtual machine. It could be a Kubernetes cluster that you wanna spin up or run a process in Kubernetes. It could be all types of virtual machines, right? It could be a VMware, it could be Parallels, it could be running a shell script, it could be whatever you want. We're just gonna specify here Docker because we're gonna pull a Docker container from Docker Hub as part of our pipeline, and that's what the runner will actually run the pipeline as in that Docker container. So our executor is gonna be Docker, but keep in mind, like I said, there's many different options here. You can run a script, VM, you name it, make it even custom. Okay, so the runner executor is gonna be Docker. Uh, another environment variable that, you, that we're gonna pass, it is the continuous integration server URL. So this is just another parameter that's needed. I'm gonna specify here that that box is our CI server, that's the URL. 
uh, long URL is going to be the same. Tab box. Um, register not interactive is another parameter that we need to pass in here. Register non interactive. True. We don't want to make the registration of the runner with the new plan non interactive. So we want to make it interactive. Uh, the Docker image we're going to specify here, but this can be overwritten. We're just going to have it as Alpine. Docker extra hosts. It's going to be the dev box. And we're also going to specify the IP address here for the dev box, which we're going to get from the terminal. So I'm just going to get, uh, where are we? If config grab inet just to see the IP address that parallels assigned to my CentOS uh, virtual machine. I see right here, it's 10.211.55.7, right? So this is gonna be the IP that my GitLab instance is gonna be using, right? So it's gonna be lo running localhost, and that's the IP address that has been assigned by parallels. Of course here, right, this is kind of dynamically assigned. If you want to hard code and configure your own IP address, that's fine. I'm just going to hard code it here in my um, Docker Compose file. And if by any chance Parallels changes the IP address, then I'm going to go in and hard code the IP to this, right? So I'm going to kind of turn it around instead of starting with uh, configuring a hard-coded IP address on my VM, I'm just going to configure it here. And if Parallels decide by any, you know, for whatever reason to change it down the road, I'm just going to go and configure it to this and hard-code it. Um, and then I'm going to have the last environment variable here. So if Docker full policy Uh, if not present, all right. So it's gonna use Docker. It's gonna pull an image of our container from Docker Hub, like I was saying, and the pull policy for that is that if it's not present, so if the Docker image is not contained locally, then it will go ahead and the runner process will go and pull from Docker Hub the image, right? Uh, that's what I'm basically telling you right here with uh, Docker pull policy is not present. All right, and we're gonna have also the volumes here defined for our runner process. We're gonna have the var run docker dash dot sock mapped to var run docker dot sock within the runner the runner uh, container. All right, so this is just mapping. The Docker sockets between my right, CentOS and my runner process. And then extra hosts, which is going to configure the dev box as extra hosts. I'm going to have it dev box and 
which is still have the IP address, and there we go. And the last thing that we need to configure is the volumes that we define here for our GitHub service. And I'm just going to configure those. So volumes, the GitLab dash config. This is going to have a driver local. And then the GitLab dash data. We also have a local driver. And that's it. That should be it for our Docker Compose file, right? We have two services. We have our GitLab service. We want it to always restart, right? In case something happens and it crashes, we want it to restart automatically. This is the image that we're gonna use for spinning up that um, GitLab container, it's just GitLab-CE, the host name. We give it a host name. Uh, we have the volumes mapped, we have the ports forwarded, so we have only port 80 forwarded between CentOS and the GitLab Docker container. Then we have the environment variables for the root password, the runner registration token, right? Twitch runners, we called it the GitLab host, we just gave it a, a friendly name here, the virtual host. Right. And then for the runner one process, we're gonna pull, it's always we wanted to restart and have it running. We're gonna run it off of this Docker image, GitLab-runner. And these are the environment variables that we're gonna pass in once that Docker container gets spun up. Right, so the registration token, we're gonna make sure that it matches the one we've configured here. The runner name, Run, like I said, run executor is going to be Docker. So we want to run our pipeline in the Docker container. This is just pointing to the dev box. Um, non interactive registration, true. Docker image by default Alpine, but we can rewrite this. Uh, extra hosts would be uh, just pointing to our uh, GitLab instance, our right, local IP address pull policy for Docker if not present, then mapping the volumes, extra hosts as a parameter in there, and then the volumes for our GitLab um, Docker container. So that is it. Let me go ahead and save. There we go. Check what we have here. Services, GitLab, always. Perfect. So, looks good. We have our Docker Compose file, right? With the two services. Now, next, let's go ahead and create a make file. So, we're going to configure. A make file but before we do the make file let's create a shell script that actually is gonna run our docker compose command for us all right it's gonna spin up um, uh, it's gonna do docker compose up Right, bringing back both instances, both of our services, GitLab, CE, and also the runner process. But by building it through a shell script, it's gonna give us the option of actually kind of adding some timers, right? We want the runner to wait for the actual um, GitLab CE container to be brought online because it takes a bit of time for the web service to start, right? For everything to get started. So we want our runner service to kind of wait a bit until um, the Docker container running GitLab C is up and running, right? So 
by uh, adding a bit of timer, right? We want to be able to do a bit of magic behind the scenes. And for doing that, we're actually gonna create a shell script, right? So just a simple dot sh file uh, they're gonna create and I'll show you what exactly we're gonna do in there. So we're gonna call it setup.sh and I'm gonna go ahead again and I'm gonna do a vim. So this is a shell script. First line, we're just gonna point it to our um, bash environment. So we're gonna, it's gonna be uh, running in bash, a shell script running uh, in the bash uh, environment. So to do that, we're just gonna do exclamation mark and then where to find the environment being emv bash and in our shell script first we're going to start with some variables all right so we're going to have our gitlab our gitlab host is going to be passing the IP address, right, that we, let me see if I still have it. I do, perfect, so that's our GitLab host, right, mapping it to the local IP on my centralized VM. Then I have my GitLab user. Like I said, we start with root, uh, GitLab password, have it also configured here that's Cisco one two three four five password uh, we're gonna have a GitLab wait time for the one process to actually wait until GitLab comes online I'm just gonna have 25 seconds in here um, and next, we're just gonna want to print color text. We're gonna print some color text as the script, the shell script runs. Um, right, we want to see a bit of color text throughout, just so that it makes it uh, a bit more interesting, and it's gonna be easier to read the output, right? Because we're gonna save the output of this script running into a like a log file and it's going to be much easier to spot right because if you get a big chunk of text in a log file right it's going to be more difficult to spot exactly where you want so by adding a bit of color throughout your log files it's nice and it's much easier once you start reading to the log file to go specifically your eyes will be going straight exactly to that colored text and it's going to be much easier for you to read through a uh, log file so that's you know just kind of a best practice for you if you want to adopt this and have your log files kind of color coded so just going to create here on success the color uh, Be, and you can get these color codes by googling it. I'm just gonna have it here, whatever I had in my uh, test environment. It's in 92 M, so the mapping between these characters and the actual colors, you can Google it, search with your favorite um, search engine, and this would be basically, should be green, 92 M. In bash shell world, it means green. <laughs> okay, so star color is gonna be this color that we just created. All right, so it's gonna be color. Uh, 
mint color. We're going to have it as uh, zero. And print tab is actually going to print these colors to the screen. All right, so we're going to have a print tab of start color. And that's it. Uh, so that's our success, kind of with a very simple function, printing green color as we make progress with our script. All right, let's do a quick echo of uh, Nothing, just to add a bit of space. And then we're gonna do a printf. We're gonna start uh, our GitLab C, right? So it's gonna print to the screen or to the logs. Uh, launching. GitLab uh, C. Gonna print this, and then what I'm gonna do is we're gonna call Docker Compose up. This is gonna look for that Docker Compose.yaml file that we just created. So you've seen that we put them in the same folder, the setup.sh and the Docker-Compose.yaml file. They're both in the same folder. So when you do Docker Compose up. By default, it's going to look for Docker Compose.yaml and it's just going to run the services from there. And the first service is going to be GitLab C, right? We defined over there, we want it to always be running. We gave it the image name um, and we passed in the environment variables, right? The password for the root accounts and all of that. So Docker, Docker Compose up. Um, and to it's gonna be the standard error, right? In bash world, so number two, the standard error, we're gonna redirect it to our GitLab setup dot log file, right? So we're gonna run this command, standard error for this command, we're gonna redirect it to a log file called GitLab underscore setup dot log, right? So it's gonna Run this command and all the output standard error also will be saved into that log file. And I'm gonna call success once that is done, right? So it's gonna go and it's gonna print our color, our green color. Um, next, let's print app that we are waiting for the container to come online, right? We're waiting for GitLab C to be available to come online. We're just gonna waiting for GitLab C to become available. Uh, I'm just gonna move the space here. So here we're just gonna do a couple of checks for making sure that uh, GitLab has come online successfully. And we do that by, by using this command. 
right, so until we're going to do a curl we're going to output that uh, response for that curl command to dev null just going to drop it we're going to do that curl silent and we're gonna go for our github host all right so we're gonna keep trying curl command which is gonna check for the availability of our web server um, until it gets a reply right and then we know uh, that our web server and GitHub is online because the web server is running. So it's basically getting a web page back, right? So we're gonna do dollar sign, curly braces uh, for our GitLab host, right? So we define our GitLab host right here, HTTP. The IP address, so we're going to run a curl command and check for that every 10 seconds. We're going to print a dot while we're waiting for the GitLab to come online. We're going to sleep for 10 seconds and that's it right waiting for GitLab C how you can actually check automatically it's right there you do a curl uh, for GitLab host every 10 seconds we also print the dot um, as we perform this curl and we're waiting for it to come online. Next, we'll have to configure GitLab. So once it's coming online, we have curl, we know that the web server is online, then we need to configure that our GitLab instance, right? So we're gonna do a, let's do a print, print app here. Also make sure we capture this in our log file so that we know at which step we are. Just gonna do a print app here. Uh, configuring external URL for GitLab, All right? So it's gonna be a default installation of GitLab. It's not gonna know which IP address it's gonna listen on. Um, and we need to pass that in as part of the bringing up of GitLab C. So let's see how we can do that. Uh, we're going to use docker compose to actually run commands within the docker container itself so we're going to do docker compose exact we're going to run an exact command into our gitlab container and we're going to go to the bash shell in our container and run the following command Right, we're gonna echo external URL, external URL, it's gonna be our GitLab host. GitLab host. There you go. And we're going to redirect this into our Etsy GitLab GitLab.rb file. Right? So it's a 
Ruby file in there, slash add C slash GitLab. We're gonna basically configure the external URL parameter in that file, right? We're gonna add the GitLab host, which is this HTTP 10 uh, to 11 .55 So that's how we're configuring our external URL for GitLab so that it knows how to listen on it. And same thing, we're gonna do a Docker Compose. We're gonna run another command in our GitLab container. Uh, GitLab CTL reconfigure because we need to, once we make that change into that GitLab.rb file, we need to reconfigure, pretty much restart the process, making sure that it picks up the new external URL, All right? So we'll do a GitLab control reconfigure. And same thing here, our standard error, we're actually gonna redirect it to our standard output and we're going to redirect that into our GitLab setup.log file just to make sure that we capture this into our, that log file. All right, so two commands here for reconfiguring the external URL. You see we're using Docker Compose exec. We're stopping, we're connecting to our GitLab container, to the bin bash, to the bash shell. We're configuring the external URL into our GitLab.rb file, and then we're reconfiguring, running that GitLab control reconfigure command. And we'll just print our colors. Now we have GitLab started, we have the external URL configured. Now what we want is to register that runner process, right, with our GitLab container, with our GitLab C. So that GitLab C is aware of the runner process and the runner process is also aware of the GitLab installation. All right, so as usual, let's print uh, the step that we're at here so that when we look at that log file, we know exactly where we stand. So at this stage, we're just registering our GitLab runner. Uh, we're waiting for 25 seconds. time seconds for GitLab to become available. All right. So let's wait then that amount of time gonna sleep for GitLab wait time just making sure right with this 25 seconds that GitLab gets a chance to get reconfigured the external URL everything just gonna wait that a, a bit of amount of time and then we're gonna run a docker compose exact but this time we're gonna connect to our runner we call the runner one and we're gonna run a GitLab runner command. We're gonna do a register, right? So it's gonna take that token. It's gonna go to the dev box. We point it to the IP address, right? So you know the IP from the Docker Compose file. It's gonna try to register using that token to that IP address that's configured in the Docker Compose file. It's gonna register and same thing, we're gonna get standard error out, redirect it to standard output, redirect it to GitLab 
setup.log. So we're going to save it in the log file. And that's pretty much all we have to do, right? Spin up, do a Docker Compose. It's going to bring our both services up, both the GitLab C and the runner process. They're both going to be running Docker containers, separate Docker containers. One is called GitLab, one is called runner1. And then we'll just going to run a curl command on the GitLab host until we get a, a web page display, right? So once we get the curl command, we know that the web page is available. Then we're gonna move to the next step and we're gonna configure the external URL for GitLab C right here. We're gonna reconfigure um, our GitLab installation with that external URL and restart the process wait for 25 seconds and then register our runner with our GitLab Community Edition installation. All right. So this is pretty much it. Uh, let's save it to a quick cat command, make sure we have everything right. Looks good. Yes, Docker Compose. We have both files in here. Docker Compose.yaml, setup.sh, and now I was talking about that make file. So let's go ahead and create our make file too. That's just uh, one second before we do that. Before we do that. We have the option of configuring also um, run a verification process. Yeah, let's create this too. So verify runners shell, right? We want to make sure that the runner is configured the right way. Um, so we're just gonna do a um, verify runners another shell script <coughs> and let's start creating that file also. Beam again. And as usual, we're going to specify the path, right? Insert to our uh, bash environment. So it's going to be user bin environment bash. We're going to use the bash environment. GitLab host. Is going to be our dev box, our GitLab user is going to be root, and the GitLab password is going to be that C1 and C0123455. All right, so next we need to create a GitLab personal access token uh, for 
our running process. going to create a function create GitHub token and here what we're going to do first is Let's see if that works. No, it doesn't. So here, first thing first is we're going to curl for the login page. To get a session cookie. Alright, so we're gonna have a function that curls our uh, GitHub host, our dev box, and it, it, it gets basically a session cookie. Um, so we're gonna have a body header here, variable that's gonna contain our curl command. And that is going to be curl. We're going to save it into temp in the in the cookies.txt file. So we're going to save that cookie in there. And we're going to curl our GitHub host. GitLab host slash users slash sign in. So that's our curl. save that into the CS we're gonna call CSR app token our variable and this is gonna contain that authorization authentication token and that looks like this we're gonna echo the body header that we just created It's going to build the logic around handling this authentication token here. Right, it's going to be authenticity token. Authenticity token. Uh, 
if it's blank. This is quite a bit of uh, a one-liner here that uh, takes quite a bit of space. And and a pipe of one B. So that basically the token, right? Going to our new user, getting the token, um, and saving it in the CSRF token uh, variable. All right. So now we got the token. And we're gonna send the login credentials and this token in our next call here. So let's do send login credentials. credentials read curl using cookies and the token from the previous request. Right? So we're gonna use curl again have it silent uh, let's take the cookies from temp where we save them uh, also the same cookies Oh, sorry, it's cookies text from time. Uh, interactive, we're gonna go for our GitLab host. Right, we're doing a GitLab host for our. Um, which is the dev box and then users slash sign in, right? So this is the URL. We're doing a curl, we're basically trying to log in with using a password, the token, and the cookies that we've obtained previously. So the data we're sending is actually going to be user login uh, it's going to be our GitLab user right and then the password and user password it's gonna be our GitLab password that we define right here also they're gonna be populated with user and password right there from there so that's the password And then the encoding of the data. Uh, would be with the token from authenticity token, which is gonna be our CSRF token. CSRF CS token that we got right here from there. 
Uh, all right. So send me login credentials. All right. I'm trying to register that runner process. So now it's gonna be more to it, but since we're kind of getting close to top of the hour here, we're gonna finish this up. Next time there's only four more lines of code that we need to add. Uh, so let me save this. save and I was telling you about having this upload into GitLab right so let me actually see if if I can actually SSH with parallels into my that box which is at uh, IP address of 10.211.55.7 yes um, And there we go. I was able to SSH into my CentOS image from my Mac machine here. So now, since I have that, uh, I can show you we're in source. And here I have my create environment, right? So let me quickly create a new con uh, a new repo in my github account a new repo i'm going to call it cicd twitch it's going to be public for all of you folks we're going to add a readme and we're just going to drop in a license for now patches we're going to create the repo And I'm gonna go back with this repo and I'm gonna get cloning here. So get clone CICD Twitch. Come on, there we go. And what should we do? Let me show you how it looks. Just the license and the readme file. Exactly the same thing we have there. But we're gonna move. Can we do recursively? Create environment to here. There's no R. Okay. Okay, so we have that create environment now locally here. So if I do a git status, I do a git add all, git commit, right, with the message of initial commit to NMs, and then a git push. Username, it's going to be AI DevNet, and then my password. And it's not going to let me because, yes, I have two factor authentication enabled on my account. And we ran out of time. Um, so I'm going to show you next time how to do this um, how to get around two factor authentication and generating the token. So we just created a repo for now and I'm gonna do a git push next time, next week, and you'll be able to
get all the files and everything and play around and like I said cloning pull requests and all of that so we're gonna fix this stay tuned next week in the next session episode 3 coming up thanks to everyone for joining hope you found it useful and see you all on the next one see you next week take care all. take care everyone bye